Please join me for our entrance verse found on page three. Every missile lit. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. O sing to the glory of his name. O render him glorious praise. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers, I am this Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to the people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life he put to death, but God raised him from the dead, of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that this Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Amen. Responsorial. Lord, let your face shine on us. Lord, let your face shine on us. When I call, answer me, O oh my just God. You who relieve me when I am in distress, have pity on me and hear my prayer. Lord, let your face shine on us. Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Lord, let your face shine on us. O oh Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart. Lord, let your face shine on us. As soon as I lie down, I fall peaceably to sleep. For you alone, O oh Lord, bring security to my dwelling. Lord, let your face shine on us. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you, that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. His expiation for our sins, 
not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Lord Jesus, open the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I, myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. May I begin with just two announcements. One first for those more so who watch the Mass on video, the second for you here. But the first is uh, if you remember years ago, we used to have a family that resided here, the Wayans. The wife, Mary Ann, would play the harp uh, for Christmas and Easter celebrations. Her, her husband, Victor, had a South African beautiful accent. They moved to Tennessee. Well, he passed away and they asked if I would come up and do the funeral in Tennessee. So I will be leaving Tuesday and I won't be coming back till Thursday. So we're not gonna have video masses. Deacon Groves will be having communion services. We will have adoration uh, of the Holy Hour. We will have the Wednesday night service. I'll be back sometime Thursday, and then we'll be back to normal on Friday, okay? And then secondly, for those here, uh, I was told last night by Brother Priest that the bishop has released a new set of COVID-19 guidelines. Uh, I've got to go back and reread them uh, make sure I understand what he wants because please understand this and I, I don't mean it as an insult or, or, or uh, something against the bishop when he writes things he has to write them for the Archbishop of Mobile Cathedral Parish Mobile they don't necessarily always apply to St. Thomas Chickasaw Butler, Alabama those places, you know the little small country towns uh, 
So I have to go back. The one thing that I did see that will apply to us is starting next week, we'll bring back the holy water. Okay? Uh, so we'll do that next week. Okay? I'm sorry, I didn't have time. I have an idea on how to do the holy water. Uh, so. Ah, associate with his ideas. <laughs> now, <clears throat> I've thought a lot about how to proceed on these, our discussions, reflections on the year of the Eucharist and the year of the parish. And what I'd like to do for the remainder of the year is really take time to look at the two great sources that we have, these two great ways God communicates himself to humanity, sacred scripture and tradition. We need to take time to reflect upon these again, because what happens, and this is just more of an introduction into next week, but what happens is, as you know, due to the fall of mankind through the persons of Adam and Eve, our intellect has been darkened. So we don't understand things. In fact, you heard that today in the gospel where it says, Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures. You and I, we come, even the church, we come to a gradual deepening of our understanding of God. And that's the beauty of God. It's, it's never going to be complete. But each generation is able to add a little bit more to the knowledge of God by its own understanding. So when it comes to sacred scripture and to tradition, we have to look at these as being, number one, inerrant. That means they're free from error. They specialize in truth. Now, obviously, people want to look at uh, sacred scripture and they'll say, okay, is this truth? Yes. All right. And they'll want to take it literally. So you mean to tell me that Balaam in the Old Testament, Balaam and his donkey have a conversation? How many times have you had a conversation with your pet and they were talking to you? Okay. No, it doesn't exactly mean it like that. Uh, we have to understand truth focuses on salvation history. Now, in this process of writing, although we say that sacred scripture and tradition are both free from error, they're truth, they focus on truth, but yet they're also inspired, meaning that the Holy Spirit is the author, the Holy Spirit guides the church in her tradition. The Holy Spirit guided the authors who wrote sacred scripture. That even though something may not be technically uh, exactly it happened that way because you have oral traditions that were compiled early on in the Old Testament. That's why you have two accounts of creation. That's why how many uh, animals did Noah take into the ark? You read one account and it's two by two, right? We all know that account. But if you go to another account of Noah, you see that there's a different number. Seven unclean, a certain number of clean animals, and it's a different number. So you, you've got to be able to step back and say, okay, I take the oral traditions and what do I understand? I'll give you the, one of the best examples that to this day, nobody that I know of, uh, no, God bless you, no expert in sacred scripture can figure out what this passage means. We're all familiar with Moses. Moses in the burning bush, right? Okay. If you go to the book of Exodus, go directly after the burning bush. Moses goes with his wife and son down to Egypt 
on the way they stop at an inn. Sacred scripture tells us God tried to kill Moses at the inn. You're looking at me shocked. It's in there. And it says that his wife circumcised his child, put blood from the circumcision on his the tops of his feet, and then God decided not to kill him. What does that mean? Nobody knows. People have for years tried to figure out something. So nobody's 100 percent sure how did it get in there. But things like that are very much present in sacred scripture. So we have to step back and look at things and go, okay, what is important? Salvation history, God's love for us, mankind's ultimate destiny, which is heaven, with truth, which is God. So all these things are very much true, inspired, pre-primera. Now the different oral traditions that were compiled, some of them may contradict each other, but that's not the point that we need to look at them literally. Okay. Are we all right so far? Pretty simple. Now, when one looks at the Bible, one needs to understand that it's not a collection of 73 or so books. It's not a collection of Christian myths. It's a profession, if I may say so in that way. A divine profession of love. God loves humanity. He loves each one of us. Sacred scripture, when read all the way through, is how God slowly and gradually expresses his love for us because we have to go slow. Remember, due to the fall, our intellects are darkened. Our wills, the desire, remember we spoke about will a couple of weeks ago, our will, that appetite, it runs all over the place and our intellect has to control it, but our wills are weakened. That's why we can't just stop with one bite of a dessert that we love. We might have to stop with one piece of a dessert we love. We have to continue. Our wills are weakened, our intellect darkened, so God now has to gradually lead us along, help us out. Like so many of you, you remember when your first child was trying to learn how to walk? You had to help them. You had to teach them how to ride a bike. Okay, it was a slow process. That's the way God is going to reveal himself to us, very slow. So next week, what we're going to do is we're going to take our time it's not a, a, please don't think this is going to be a year-long course in sacred scripture, but I just want to hit some of the main points to let you understand the beauty of God's revelation to you in sacred scripture and then lead you into what God intended. No offense to any other denomination out there. God intended to reveal himself fully and completely in and through the Catholic Church. We'll show you how that intention was lived out. Because remember, for 1,500 years, if you said Christian, you meant Catholic. If you said Catholic, you meant Catholic. So we'll explain all of that to you as we move on for the rest of the year, okay? Y'all have a blessed day and a good week next week. Thank you. May Almighty God be with you. May it bless you, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now let us say of our profession of faith our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father of all ages, God for God, right from right, true God for true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. 
and by the Holy Spirit, who is the Lord of the Virgin Mary, and the King of Men. For our sake, he was crucified by the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son, who is adored and glorified, who has told the good prophets. I believe in one of the Holy Catholic and the Council of the Church. I confess one of the baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Come together as one family in faith, let us offer to God our prayers and our needs. For the shepherds of our souls, that they may have the strength to govern wisely, the flock entrusted to them by the Good Shepherd, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the whole world, that it may truly know the peace given by Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who suffer, that their sorrow may be turned to gladness, which no one can take from them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For our own community, that it may bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for all those in our community who are suffering, whether from physical, emotional, or mental illnesses, that they may be comforted by the resurrected Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, joined to the intercession of St. Thomas the Apostle, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord God, pray. <clears throat> and let us pray today for Alex and Ramirez, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord God, pray. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude with a prayer of praise and honor for the Blessed Trinity. Glory be to the Father, I am the Son, I am the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be, world without end. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours would be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Lord, for the praise and glory of your name, for our good and all the church. Receive, O Lord, we pray these offerings of your exalted church, that as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ. Our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. 
Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome a pastoral joy every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and took willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, I drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your grace. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil grace and grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. We await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And gracious the director of peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Please join me for our communion verse found on page 88. We'll do the first reading. The disciples recognize the Lord Jesus and the breaking of the bread. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Let with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant we pray that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thank you, God. Prayer to St. Michael for our families. Holy Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
provide for aids and protection against storms, hurricanes, and other disasters. Blessed be God. Blessed be the Holy Name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God, true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the Holy Spirit of heart. Blessed be the most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus and the most holy man of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit and the soul. Blessed be the great name of God and Mary the soul. Blessed be our holy and man of conception. Blessed be the glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary the virgin mother. Blessed be St. Joseph and the most gentle God. Blessed be God and the angels and the saints. 